and greetings Keystone peoples. Uh, again, this is Mr. Jerry with our keyboard lesson for the week, week number five already. What I want you to do is turn to lesson eight. And in lesson eight, we want to learn how we can go beyond the key of C. Now in lesson seven and previous, we want to remember that when we play the primary chords in the key of C, we have C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and our octave C. So that's the pattern that we want to remember for the chords at a major scale. But the first thing we want to learn now is how and why are these chords major, minor, or diminished? And the reason is because of the intervals or the distance between the notes of these three notes of the chord. When you look at your C chord, for example, you'll see that there's two black keys in between the first and the third note. And when you look at the third note and the fifth note, you'll notice that there's only one black key in there. So if we were actually counting the actual notes, like one, two, three, four, five, right from C to E, there's five notes, one, two, three, four, five, and then from the E to the G, there's one, two, three, four, there's only four. So there's one fewer note between the three and the five than there is between the one and the three. Now if we look at the D minor, we'll see that that pattern just reverses. So between the D and the F, between the one and the three, you have one, two, three, four. And then between the E, the F, and the A, you have one, two, three, four, five. So you see that pattern just reversed between a major and a minor chord. So that means that the difference between a major and a minor chord is that middle note. Because, all you math majors out there, you see, 5 plus 4 equals 4 plus 5. So the end result is the same, but it's that middle note in between. So when you take a major chord, like C major, and you lower that middle note, which is E, and you lower it, or flat it, to the E flat, that's how the C major becomes a C minor. It's very important to remember that when you name the chord, the note that you've moved is the E natural down to an E flat. You call the note flat when you lower it. You don't call it the D sharp because the chord is the root, the third, and the fifth. So that middle note always has to be named by an E note like that. So C major, C E G. C minor, C E flat G. Now, when we go to the D minor, we have DFA. So if we just reverse the process and we take that middle note F and raise it now to an F sharp, we now make this F minor, excuse me, a D minor into a D major. You hear the difference? D minor, D major. So we want to take that process and go through all of our chords. So E minor, raise the G, G sharp, E major. F major, lower the A to A flat, A, F minor. G major, raise, or excuse me, lower the B to a B flat, G minor. A minor, raise the C, C sharp, A major. Now, the B diminished. The B diminished is a chord that's different from everything else. Because between one and three, we have one, two, three, four. And between three and five, we have one, two, three, four. We have the same intervals between one and three and three and five. So that means we can take that diminished chord, and the first thing we want to do is raise the fifth, the F, to the F sharp, and that'll make it minor. So the B diminished, raise the fifth to the F sharp, and we have a B minor. And then if we take that D, the middle note, and raise the D to a D sharp, we have the B major. So that's how we turn the majors to minors and the minors to majors. And in lesson eight, there's one more chord called an augmented, which is where you take a major chord and raise the fifth, like that. So, okay, uh, I'll stick with the lesson. There's a lot of songs and stuff that use those chords. So here's where we want to learn how to just pretty much play every chord that we can find on the keyboard and get out of the key of C. Now, when we remember our patterns of major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, we can then 
Remember that the chords on the first note, C, and the fourth note, F, and the fifth note, G, those are the three major chords in every key. So what we can do now, let's just, there's an easy way musically, and it's called the circle of fifths. So if we start at C and we count up five, one, two, three, four, five, we're in the key of G. So the key of G is going to be the first key that's going to have the first accidental or adding a black key. So what we want to do is, okay, the G, if we just play it naturally, it's a G major. And if we go to the four chord, one, two, three, four, which is C, it's also already major. But when we go to the D, the five chord, we'll know that the D is a minor chord. So that means we need to take the F natural, raise it to an F sharp. And so in the key of G major, we have an F sharp. So if we played all the notes, but instead of playing the F, we played the F sharp, we would have... And there's our scale for the G major scale. So when we want to play in the key of G, we have the G and the C and the D major and our G. So those are the three chords, major chords in the key of G major. So if G is now one, and we count up five, one, two, three, four, five, we're at the key of D. So if we start at D, we remember we've already raised the F to an F sharp. So we want to keep keep those in there. So we start with the D major, and we go up five, one, two, three, four, five, and we see that the A is our next. Four. One, two, three, four. Go ahead. Remember. Okay. G. So G's already major like that. So we have D major, and that's the F sharp that came in from the last key. And then the four chord is G. It's already major. But we go to the five chord, which is A. We know that A is normally a minor chord. So then we have to raise that middle note, the C to a C sharp, to get the A major. So now when we're in the key of D major, we have the D major with the F sharp and the G, which is all natural keys, and then the A, which has our C sharp. So again, if we were to play the key of D, remembering to add an F sharp and a C sharp, there's our key of D. And again, continuing with the circle of fifths, when we're at D, the fifth note is one, two, three, four, five, we're now in the key of A, and we can continue that. Now here's, here's the little hint. The new note is always going to be found in the five chord, and the new note will always be the seventh note of the scale. Somehow my professors didn't realize that. It was never taught, but it's really simple when you look at it that way. So here's where what I want you to do is take all your white key chords, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and C major, and you'll see on the bottom of the page for lesson eight, you're changing majors to minors, and minors to majors. So you just go through every chord and change what it is to what it is not. If it's a major, turn it into a minor. If it's a minor, turn it into a major. Remember, if it's a diminished, you raise the fifth first, which in this case is the F to the F sharp, and you have a minor chord now. And then with the minor chord, you raise the third, and you have the major chord. So the B diminished kind of gives you the full process of how chords change like that. So that's a good way to learn how to play outside of the key of C major by remembering that by finding what the one, four, and five chords are for each key, you're actually playing every single note in the key, the full you know eight note octaves. And so all you need to do is find those three chords and how to make them majors, and you'll find how to, uh, or which notes need to be changed for to that new key. So when you see songs out there that are not in the key of C, that's how you'll know how to play that. When you see a chord that says D, it's not going to be a D minor, but a D major, so you got to raise that middle note, and that's how you'll be able to play those songs that are in the chords that are not the white key chords.
So that's my keyboard lesson for this week. Have a great week. Remember, if you don't have that lesson, you can always email me and I can send it to you. And uh, everyone else, have a great week. Mr. Jerry signing off and have a wonderful time. Bye-bye.